Hi, and welcome to your next tip and trick with me, David Earl. We're going to be talking about some mixing stuff. Uh, primarily, how to get ready for a mix. How to get everything organized and grouped together so that things look good, sound good, and we know what tracks we're dealing with. So what I have here is I have a finder window that has some tracks. And I may have gotten these tracks from a Pro Tools session uh, from an artist who went off and maybe tracked piano and drums which is precisely what happened here. I'm going to grab these files and drag them over in, directly into the tracks area of Logic. I have it create new tracks. It's going to import the audio. It's doing a sample rate conversion because these were originally recorded at 88.2, so it should take just a minute. So the audio, when it comes in and it's sample rate converted, we can still detect that it had tempo settings and possibly markers. So I'll click Import and Import again for the markers. And here are all of our tracks. So the first thing you want to do if you brought this in from Pro Tools is you want to control click on it, click Move, and tell it to move to its original recording position. So everything is offset except for the bass drum. Now the bass drum may have been flown in later, and it might cause us some problems. But um, for now, what I'm going to assume is that it's supposed to start with the other audio files, and later on we can change it. So I'm going to click the drum room, hit Control Home, and that brings my playhead to the beginning of that region. I'll click the bass drum, hit semicolon, and that brings the bass drum in line with everything else. You'll see that the regions have lined themselves up. I have this overhead overdub going on in here. So I want to make sure that those are lined up because that'll tell me whether my import happened correctly or not. Uh, looks like it's still, yeah, it's still manufacturing overviews. So we'll get the kick and the kick res will come next. So it takes a little second for it to get written in. Um, yep, there goes the kick. Kick res will come next and it will gradually fill in but what I can do now is I can actually just have a listen and see if everything's lined up just using my ears, right? So I'll open up the mixer by hitting X. And here's my mixer. I'm going to grab everything that's in the mixer. And I can actually get all of the tracks at once if I hit Shift C. Because that's selecting by color. And by default, audio tracks have a bluish color. So if you select an audio track and hit Shift C, they'll all be selected at the same time. It won't select your auxiliaries, which is very cool. I'll bring the volume way down because there's a lot of tracks going on. So I'll bring it down to like neg 12. It's a nice place to start so that I have plenty of headroom on my mix when I'm mixing. And I see that our overviews are still populating and that's cool. But I should be able to listen without it clipping. I want to check the master output down here in the mixer. Just make sure it doesn't clip while I'm listening. Cool, it sounds like they've come in okay. It sounds like everything's all right. So I'll close the mixer, and I'm gonna come back into this area and start dealing with the individual tracks. Now I have this bass drum track, which is like a concert bass drum. Usually when I organize my tracks, I'll do drums and then bass and then keyboards and then vocals. That's just, um, it may be because I'm kind of old school. I used to mix on a desk on a mixing console where I'd have the drums on the left and then gradually I'd move from basses to keyboards and have my vocals towards the center of the console because that's where I was going to do most of my uh, automation. So I keep that towards the center. So I'm kind of mimicking that here in Logic, even though it's not necessarily as necessary anymore. Maybe I'm kind of old fashioned. So what I'm going to do in the tracks area is I'm going to hit option T and choose color bars because I want to be able to see the color bars in the tracks area as I organize these tracks by color. I'll open up the mixer and I'm going to select everything that is a drum. So that's basically everything left of this overhead. I'm going to hold shift and then option C opens your color palette. Make it red. Go to my pianos. And I'll make those green. 
Now, that is a naming convention that I'm used to and that I like. Oh, I left some drums down here. So, I also need those to be the same color as the drums that I had earlier. There's a cool kind of way to handle that, because these are in gradients, it's kind of hard to see exactly what color you've got, but if you select one of the drums that you did earlier, and then I'm gonna hold Command and click on these drums, you'll see that there's a highlight around that color, and I select it, now they're the same color of red. Back in the tracks area, I'm gonna hit Z. That allows me to see everything at once. And I can take all of my drums and group them together up top. So this concert bass drum, I think, is gonna be at the bottom of my drums. I want to grab my kicks, so I have kick beater, and then kick res, which is sort of an out kick. We have an in kick and an out kick. And then I'll have my snare top, snare bottom, snare top overdub, snare bottom overdub, and actually I'll do it like this. Now my snare top, my snare bottom overdub, da 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 da, yep, that's good. Drum room is gonna be all the way down here. Uh, I've got my hi-hats are gonna be next, and then my toms, so I've got a rack tom and a floor tom, overhead left, overhead left overdub, overhead right, overhead right overdub, uh, maybe I'll do it this way. I'll have overhead left and right, and I'll have overhead left and right overdub. So I have those organized. Then I get to the pianos, and the pianos are recorded in a very interesting way. We have a set of stereo mics on the piano that are like this, and then we also have a mid side, which is giving me a good center image, and then some uh, stereo information on the sides. But, uh, and I have this little, like this happens a lot when you import tracks, like there's like a little region cut at the very end here. I'm just gonna delete that, I don't need it. Cool. So I've got my stereo, I've got my mid side. So here's the mid, and then this is gonna be the left side and the right side, and then I have a piano room mic. And this was a good engineer, he actually lined it up, so there's no kind of weird phase or anything like that. But I'm gonna show how we can group them for easier editing later. Okay, so it looks like I have this together. Now I want my regions to match my channel strip color. So I select all, and I hit Shift, Option, C. Now they're all colored. Now, when they were recorded in Pro Tools, there was autom an automatic naming convention was applied. As you see, we have 1301, right? So I can hit Shift Return, delete, 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 delete. And then hit Tab, one, two, three, four, five, six. Tab, one, two, three, four, five, six. And you know, kind of assembly line fashion. I can get these down to just being the names of the individual instruments. Cool, now my next favorite key command, command A, shift option C was for color. Now we're gonna do N for naming. And now all my regions are the proper names. So of course, you'd probably go through and you would get your basic balance of your instruments together. Like you'd go through and adjust your volumes. And uh, the next thing we need to do is, is consider panning. So when we look at a drum set, the overheads are almost always gonna be panned hard left and hard right. So I'm gonna do that first. And I can't really read the names too well, so I'm gonna control click, configure channel strip components, and choose three lines. Now I'm also gonna go over here to where it says VCA and turn that on, and I'll show you why in a minute. All right, so my overheads are panned. Then I have my drum room, that's all good. Kick is usually up the center. The snare might be ever so slightly to the right or left. And the way that I can determine that is to listen to the overheads and go to a place where there are some drums happening. And then wherever I hear the energy in those overheads is where I'm gonna slightly pan the snares. So I'd go to all of the snares and then pan them ever so slightly right because that's where they were in the image, in the stereo image. So panning is very important, especially when it comes to drum sets because the overheads are really gonna give you the full, the full width in the stereo image of the room. And the pianos, I wanna make sure that ORTF, which is that spaced pair of microphones, is gonna go left and right, mid is up the center, 
go left and right here, and then we have our room. Now we're almost, we're almost good. So I'm going to open up the mixer, and now I'm going to take all of these tracks that are in the drums, and I'm going to assign a VCA, create new VCA for selected channel strips. And way over on the right-hand side, I'm going to call this drums. I'll get my basic ba my balance of drums together on my faders, but when we're listening, when we're mixing, uh, we may be overloading the stereo output or something, and I want to just have a fader that I can quickly attenuate if I'm peaking the stereo out. So that's why we have these VCA faders. They give us a chance to mix in groups, and we can solo whole groups as well just by coming over here and hitting the solo button. So I don't have to touch the individual faders, and I don't even have to group the faders together. I can just have a single fader that allows me to solo um, or mute a whole section and then move it around. So we're going to do the same thing for pianos. So I'm going to take these pianos, create a new VCA, double click, and call it piano. So now I can solo the piano VCA, or I could solo the drums. And as you can imagine, you could have backing vocals as a single fader, your lead vocal as a single fader. You could also separate the, out the kick if you wanted and have that on its own, um, and bass. And it gives you a way that you can very quickly and easily uh, manipulate whole groups of instruments without having to use the old grouping feature, which is still very handy for doing things like editing. Um, but uh, when you use the grouping feature, which is above the VCA, see up here, then you might group things like your snare drums together or your kicks together and do that sort of thing. Um, you'll have a different use for groups as well, but it's nice that Logic, once again, gives you this tremendous flexibility. Now what we can also do, I'm going to close that out, and let's say that I want a little less, uh, let's see, Actually, here's another thing. So I've got a kick beater and a kick resonant. I might want to sum those together so I can process both kicks at the same time. I may have a little bit of processing on in each individual kick, but you can run into problems sometimes when you have multiple EQs, because it'll cause some phase relationships. So if you want to group them together, just come up to track, create a track stack, and use summing stack. Do the same thing with your snares. Shift Command G is also a faster way to do that. I can do that also with my overheads because I'll probably process them together. So we're actually giving ourselves a lot of room. Many times when I get mixes these days, and I'm using the, the moniker sum because it's important for me to understand that this is not just a snare, but it is a sum of a couple of snares. Cool. As you see, we're, we're, we're we, you know, a lot of times these days, what I, was, what I wanted to say was, uh, I get these mixes that are just enormous. And this is a way to get it, get it really compressed down so that you can dig down into the mix if you want to, but you're not hampered by having this massive session that you have to, you know, you need a map to get through, right? And if I want to, I can make this even smaller. All I need to do, and this is kind of a tricky thing, I'm gonna take the drum room, and I'm gonna create a track stack. Now, if I was to use all of these and do a track stack, you'll notice that it won't let me, but I got a trick. Got a bass drum, track, create track stack. I could make it a folder stack. And now all I do, grab all these tracks, I'm using shift, drag it in just right on top of that bass drum. Now it's on one track. So there you go. That's one way to keep your session organized, to use VCAs to import things from maybe a Pro Tools session and get everything ready for your project. Getting ready to mix is really kind of half the battle and getting things set up. Um, but keeping things organized like this will keep you from getting lost in really massive sessions. Hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you next time.
Take care. Ciao.